Good morning, YouTube pipe smokers and the YTPC. Southern Piper here. This morning I am drinking just some black coffee in my Air Force mug. And I am smoking bat with a hat out of my favorite pipe. This is my, this was one of my first nice pipes. It is a Thomas Cristiano. Um, and I just, I absolutely love, love, love this pipe. I don't know if I've ever shown you guys, but it's got some really nice bird's eye. Just a lovely smokes. Never have a problem with this, with this pipe, so. Appreciate you stopping by this morning. Happy New Year's Eve. This time tomorrow would be a new year. Um, and hopefully a better one. All right. I wanted to talk about collecting. We have, as pipe smokers, uh, a, a built-in mechanism by which to have a collection because we have pipes. I'm going to close this window. Bear with me. I think my pipe collection... I think I'm up to uh, I'll maybe at 30 and I love some don't love others as much so we already have a mechanism by which to have a collection so we probably understand the kind of the principles and the, and the, uh, what word am I trying to say? Um, responsibility, uh, organ organizing around collecting. So, We are already collectors, but I wanted to show you a few things that, that I have collected uh, and continue to collect just to show them off. And I want to start with <clears throat> my grandmother's matchbook collection that I mentioned in my hobbies video. So I have two jars like this. Full of matches. Mostly full of matches. Now, some of these are ones that I have added because uh, I had gotten into collecting them um, until they kind of went by the wayside and, and really you can't find matchbooks anymore. But they're fun. They're literally from all over the world including right here at home because, and I don't know why she picked these up, but that book right there, First Alabama Bank. <laughs> you, if you live in the States, you may recognize that by its current name, which is Regions Bank. Um, I don't know how far reaching uh, Regions is. I know it's all over the Southeast, um, but it is one of the larger banks headquartered here in Birmingham. A little history lesson there for you. So I wanted to show you a few of these to show you how far uh, 
my grandmother traveled. We will start in the Far East. And I don't, I wish I had the year that she went, but she stayed at a hotel in Kyoto, Japan, uh, called, and I'm going to probably butcher the name, Miyako Hotel. I don't know if you can see that. There, that's the better. And while she was in Japan, she went to Tokyo and stayed at the Imperial Hotel. I have a book of matches here from Taipei, Taiwan, where she stayed at the Grand Hotel. And then we'll come, oh, well, there's one more. And I have not done research. I don't know where this place is, but it's Ocean Palace Restaurant and Nightclub. And it has some sort of characters from the Far East. Um, but I'll have to do some research to figure out where that is. And some of you may know just by looking. All right, so we will come west, and this, I believe, was from Sweden. It's the Sarah Hotel. Hmm. There's one I thought I had gotten out. I must not have. But there was also uh, a hotel from Stockholm. Uh, here is a hotel <clears throat> in Cairo. And so a few that I added to the collection. Oh, wait. Let's come back to the United States. So I always appreciate this book of matches because it's from my hometown. And um, the establishment is no longer in business, but it's Clancy McHugh's. Used to be a little uh, pub downtown. And so I always I love that book also. Um and then there are several from Nashville. Here's one from Orlando. Uh, she stayed at the Save Inn Luxury Lodging for Less. So I think that's really neat. And then a few that I've added. Um, when I was... Uh, I went up to visit a friend in Washington, D.C. in 2000 or 01, and we ate at the old Ebbett Grill. So I picked up a book of matches there. Uh, let's see, I went to Kentucky to visit the Kentucky Horse Park. Picked up a book there. Um, and then one and I don't even think it's in business now, but the Pickwick Hotel in Birmingham, Alabama. I went to a luncheon or something there or some sort of party and, and picked these up. But again, unfortunately, you know, this is something that's gone by the wayside and you, and you can't really collect these anymore. Uh, but I thought that was interesting. I thought I would show a few of these um, to everybody. Uh, I also want to show you guys my... Um, my my beer glass collection and so we're gonna we're gonna switch to do that
um, and then we'll and then we'll come back and uh, talk. So here is my pint glass collection. I've got a few up there, and I'll tell you a background on a few of these. So and why they're special and why I collect them. So this is Packy's. Uh, sports bar and grill and that is right outside the gate of Wright Patterson Air Force Base and I spent many a night in there hanging out with my buddies when I was stationed up there um, this is Rick Brow and it's a little brewing company I don't know if it's still there in Richmond Virginia when I was stationed in Virginia, we would drive up to Richmond and eat there some, so sweet memories. This is a glass from a trip to St. Louis that I took with my son. And so I just have different ones that I've collected or been given over the years. Uh, this one was a trip to DC that we made went to see the Rangers play, if you see that back there, baseball. And then these aren't the same style, but these were gifts right there. They've got my initials on them. And that was a big beer stein I got participating in a triathlon. There's Pike Place Brewing. I got that when I was in Seattle. And this was a special gift this year because my favorite baseball team the Atlanta Braves won the World Series. Now, the prize of the collection is this one, London Pride. And on the back, you can see it's got a royal stamp. So the story behind the uh, glass from <clears throat> the, uh, the, the London Pride glass I went to London, I believe it was 2008-ish, and we did uh, a lot of, um, I mean, we, we tried to fit as much as we could, we were there for about a week, and had gone to this pub, and we, we, we certainly did a, a, a pub tour. Most of the guys on the trip were beer drinkers. So we went in this pub, you know, and, and I would say 99.3% of everybody we encountered in London were just fabulous. Very hospitable, um, very, uh, very excited to interact with um, Yanks, as they call us, even though I ain't a Yankee. So I went to a pub, several of us went to a pub, and the barman uh, obviously recognized our, our uh, accents, and you know, we started bantering about beer and how uh, the beer in England is better, and uh, and it was it was really fun time, uh, and I asked, and I was drinking London Pride, and I loved the fact that, and it was the first time I'd seen it. It, it, it happens here in the states now too, um, but at the time I had not seen it much. But you know, whatever beer you ordered, they served it in a glass with the with the name on it, and so I asked the barman if I could uh, buy the. Uh, Glass. I wanted to take it home with me. I collected. I apologize for the barking. So he said, "Well, I can't sell it." And so I, you know, I said, "Well, you know, just name name the price. I'll I'll pay." And I I think I may have offered him ten pounds. He said, "I can't do it." He said, "But I tell you what, if you can finish another one." I'll give you the glass. <laughs> I was like, okay. 
So that's the story behind my London Pride glass and one of the reasons it's the pride of my collection. So enjoy the collections that collect collections that you have. Uh, share, you know, whatever you guys collect. I would love to hear. And until next time, I wish you a happy new year. Happy smoking and blessings to you and your family.